Hi and then welcome to my book corner today we're doing our third review for Don't Die July and that is Psychic Teenage Bloodbath 2 by Carl John Lee. This is an extreme horror novel I read book one last year and it was kind of a turning point for the channel um, thanks to a shout out following that review by the amazing MJ over at Reading This Life link to her channel down below. Um, and then in December, while I was on my Read What You Own challenge, I noticed a book two had came out. So this is once again a novella coming in at 222 pages long on Kindle. And this was released on December 1st of 2023. As always, we shall talk about the story, characters, world building and presentation before I give my final thoughts at the end of the video. So let's dive straight in. So we left book one with what looked like a happy ending. The Cliff Notes version of book one is at the start of the book. Both Charlie and Susan were in a relationship together. There was an accident at prom leaving Susan in a coma. However, she was not in a proper coma and was aware of what was going on around her, which drove her madly insane. And she developed psychic abilities and she acted out what initially looked like in defense of, Susan, of um, Charlie, but actually wasn't in the end. Um, the ability to make people do unspeakable things to themselves and others while still being aware of what they're doing, but not being in full control. By the end of the book, it looked like Susan had been killed and that both Charlie and Lynette, Charlie's new girlfriend, looked like they had a future together. We now fast forward 10 years to discover that, in fact, that was not a happy ending. And that somehow at the moment of death, Susan had transferred her consciousness into the body of Lynette and over time took over. So we hit a point where Charlie is um, is basically been an abused sex slave for Susan for best part of a decade at this point. And we're hitting New Year's Eve and they're out at a party the one night a year that Charlie is allowed to go out. And the book starts in shocking fa um, fashion where Susan gets jealous when she sees Charlie speaking to somebody, uses their psychic powers to cause them to, to um, embarrass themselves. They agree to go home. Susan causes them to throw themselves out of a window. And on the way home, Charlie comes up with the idea and manages to cause a car crash, which kills Charlie outright. And leaves Susan in a, well, definitely going to die level of condition. And you end up in this sort of dreamscape situation where Charlie is sort of in the gap between living and dead. Susan, however, so determined for revenge, follows her into this dreamscape with the determination to take her back and continue to abuse her, basically. Um... And what you have is this level of a cat and mouse going on as Charlie tries to discover how to defeat Susan and maybe even um, release the spirit of Lynette from within her own body. It's a fairly bare bones um, narrative for this one, um, especially compared to book one, which did feel like it had quite a strong narrative thread holding it together. This one's a lot more tenuous and makes it a lot harder to be invested in. But this is an extreme horror novel, and to be frank, the narrative is not the most important thing for this sort of novel. So it does enough, just, but only just. Much like the story, the characterization here is paper thin, and again, this is leaning a little bit more on book one's characterization to engender the sense of sympathy towards the character of Charlie in particular. You have three main characters here, Charlie, Lynette, and Susan. We'll start with Charlie, as she is very much the main character and the main POV character throughout this. And what you have here is just a broken person, a shadow of an actual character, which makes sense for what she's been through, but doesn't make her a particularly sympathetic character in many regards. You get the odd moment, the fact that she truly misses and loves Lynette, her hatred towards Susan, some bits and pieces as she goes through her own sort of memory palace um, of her history and her love for those around her. But you don't get a huge amount. What you basically get here is a sense of somebody who is basically just human prey. There's not really much past that. And 
really it's quite weak characterization until you have the flip of the switch which is driven by lynette and lynette appears very briefly in the book he's not in it a great deal and he's very much the character of hope she is there to narratively give charlie hope and belief that she can eventually beat susan and the thing is beat is such a subjective term here because they are dead like that was a fatal car crash at the beginning just to be clear so the term beat we'll touch on in world building in a minute the most interesting character bizarrely is susan but again susan is really just a horrific depraved monster i can't call her a person really the closest i can get to like an emotional drive here is that susan sees charlie as a possession in many regards but i don't think she realizes this that that is how she sees charlie this is an example of twisted love taken to the extreme which makes sense for an extreme horror and i don't think really that susan realizes quite how horrific she is becoming quite how much of a monster she is and when she does realize that you don't have a moment of character growth you don't have a moment of regret you have an embracement of it which again kind of makes sense for the type of novel that this is but there's no character growth going hit on here with any of the characters it very much leans on the fact that you have to have read book one to have gained that emotional connection there this is really just a few characters being put through a human mince grinder so in terms of world building there's not really anything for the real world first of all but that is fine in itself because the real world is such a minor point of the book but most of this is set in a purgatory afterlife dream world memory palace thing it's quite poorly defined because i'm not clear it's not clear whether it's an amalgamation of the three main characters memories that's building this place and um, whether it's a set place and they're just influencing it or whether they're actually in one person's head and the others are sort of intruders in that it's poorly defined as are the rules for the area now a few places you think you establish rules and it turns out that that's a bait and switch and that worked quite well in itself but the world building here doesn't really feel like true world building it feels like world building simply to allow set pieces to take place it feels like what you'd class as a scripted event in a video game everything is just there to enable a scene to occur but doesn't actually add any depth to it it's just backdrop unfortunately on to presentation that and i'm going to be quite complimentary actually because carl john lee's writing style really does capture the visceral and disturbing and frankly disgusting nature of some of the scenes that he writes um there are times when reading this that i had to put the book down i initially started reading this on a live stream and i suspect my facial expressions at times were a picture and i had to put it down at 40 percent my issue with this is it peaked quite soon so in terms of book one you had a ramping up and once it started ramping up like it was away it was gone but the worst things were at the back end of the book whereas the things in here that really disturbed me came at around about the 40 percent mark and then everything after that i just felt a little bit desensitized and that's not to say they were badly written because they absolutely were not they were grotesque they were disgusting there was true body horror there was a true sense of horror from the character's point of view that were going through some of this as well so this is in terms of the pure writing of what is going on this is exceptionally well written extreme horror splatterpunk but it did feel like the actual more almost personal moments of splatterpunk came a little bit too early on which kind of cheapened later points a little bit for me personally but this is very viscerally written it will get a reaction of you if you are a fan of splatterpunk then this is a style of writing that will probably appeal to you final thoughts i've kind of rattled through this review and the reason for that is there's not a great deal of substance to this this is a set of set pieces that are very well written for what they are but the context and the backdrop and the emotional investment isn't really there whereas book one did have a through line and characters that you could really connect to and sort of root for or root against 
and had an interesting mystery box element. This feels like putting people through the ringer for the sake of putting them through the ringer. And, you know, this is Splatterpunk. This is extreme horror. That is part of what the genre is about. But it left it fe me feeling like it was a little bit vapid. Again, though, the writing is actually really good, especially for those horrific body horror scenes. They really do give you that sort of ugh moment of thought as you're reading them. But I have said this before. Extreme horror isn't really my genre. I was hoping, because this is the book one was the extreme horror that I read that I sort of enjoyed the most, or at least appreciated the most. I was hoping this would kick on from that. In hindsight, I should have stopped at book one. If you're a fan of extreme horror, you will actually probably really like this because of the visceral nature of the writing. For me personally, it was definitely a not for me. I gave this a 2.5 stars rounded up to 5. But that's my thoughts on this. I'd love to know yours. Um, if you've watched the end of the video, please consider giving this a thumbs up, a comment, and a subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know what extreme horror have you read that you've really enjoyed, or really appreciated at least. Let me know in the comments. I'll catch you all soon.